Coming up on We Talk News this week, the 2024 Farm Bill has been amended and the industry is in jeopardy. Now, THC Cannabis is in a war of words with hemp. When the political dust settles, what will hemp be defined as anyway? What about Delta 8 and the kids all agree the system put in place by the 2018 Farm Bill needs changes? Plus, the public comment period is now open for your opinion on the expected move to a Schedule 3 drug. All pro-cannabis users need to rally and let their voices and words be heard, or at least texted. Meanwhile, prohibitionists rally to keep it right where it is at Schedule 1, despite that positivity about President Biden's recognition that no one should go to prison for consuming or possessing cannabis. And we'll talk with New York News 12's Tara Rosenblum about her recently released documentary, The Cannabis Contest. Tara is one of the most honored industry journalists who followed three social equity applicants on their road to licensing. Or not. We Talk News with Elena Pinto is next. everyone. Hope you enjoyed the Memorial Day holiday and welcome to Weed Talk News, Pro Cannabis Media's weekly roundup of cannabis news items from coast to coast. I'm Elena Pinto. The next step in the rescheduling possibility for cannabis is a 60-day period for public comment. So are you in the descheduling or nothing side of the industry or are you willing to take a wait and see approach? Are you fearful of big pharma or big alcohol taking over this fledgling billion dollar industry? Well, I'll agree. However, this is a major step by the federal government that finally recognizes cannabis does have medicinal qualities and is less addictive than many other drugs. So now is your time for you and your voice to be heard. And so we have the URL where you can go to do that. But in this case, uh, you're going to write your opinion to be shared with the federal government. Be prepared. You can post anonymously or as an individual or as a business. With more on these next steps in this never-ending fight to end cannabis prohibition, here's Andrew Beringer in Washington, D.C. I'm Andrew Beringer, and this is the D.C. Area Report for We Talk News. We start with breaking news from Washington, D.C., where a House committee has approved an amendment to the Farm Bill that would impose a ban on hemp-derived cannabinoids, including popular products like Delta-8 THC. Now, if enacted, this amendment would redefine hemp, excluding cannabinoids synthesized or manufactured outside the plant from legal status. The overall bill introduces several changes to hemp regulations, such as reducing restrictions on industrial hemp producers, enabling USDA lab accreditation, and the elimination of the felony ban for industrial hemp licensing. Now, despite these provisions aimed at supporting hemp farmers, the amendment has sparked a heated debate within the industry. Proponents of the amendment, including the U.S. Cannabis Council, representing cannabis businesses, argue that it closes a loophole from the 2018 Farm Bill and supports regulating intoxicating hemp products in the same manner as cannabis products. Opponents, primarily from the hemp industry, acknowledge the need for regulation but prefer strategic measures over just an outright ban. The hemp market, which rebounded in 2023 after losses in 2022, now faces uncertainty. Despite the challenges, the 2022 hemp market surpassed all state cannabis sales combined and matched national craft beer sales. In rescheduling news, the public comment period has officially begun on the topic of rescheduling cannabis. This means the public can submit input before the DEA makes a final decision on the proposed rule. Electronic submissions must be received no later than 11.59 p.m. EST on July 22, 2024. If you prefer to send them in the mail, they must be postmarked on or before the same date. For those who feel strongly about this matter and wish to request a hearing, you have until June 20th, 2024 to make your request known. Well, I'm Andrew Berenger, reporting for We Talk News. I'll see you next week. Next up, is the consumption patterns of U.S. citizens cannabis or alcohol? 
Well, for the first time ever, more people in this country who use cannabis daily is larger than the group that drinks alcohol every day. This is significant because it doesn't mean more people are smoking weed more than drinking booze. It just means for the first time in over 40 years, daily use belongs to the cannabis consumer. Another interesting data point discovered in this survey by the National Survey of Drug Use and Health is that over the 30-year period from 1992 to 2022, there are more consumers who are older than 35 than younger. Now let's check in with the number one cannabis market in the country, California. That's where the term California sober refers to people who have stopped drinking alcohol altogether and only use cannabis for whatever purpose works for them. Our California correspondent is Lavana Vassau. I'm Lavana Vassau from the Bay Sesh on 89.5 FM KZCT reporting for PCM with this week's California report for We Talk News. Cannabis social clubs in California could be a reality sooner than later. California lawmakers have once again approved a bill to legalize cannabis cafes. You might remember that the last bill paving the way to open a cannabis social club was vetoed by government, Governor Newsom last year. The first one started a conflict with the state's long-standing no smoking laws. Let's hope this one gets through because seven years into legalization and we still don't have anywhere social that we can legally smoke weed, really. One thing I always take pride in as a California native is that as the number one market in the country, we always have the most weed, the best weed, and of course, the freshest weed. Now, false reporting of test results on the percentage of THC and other can cannabinoids in our products is not only still going on, but it's getting worse. There are now reports of moldy weed staying on the shelves of our legal dispensaries for as much as six months past their display date which is very concerning. Throw in the fact that a month ago, we reported on the recall of Mike Tyson's undisputed cannabis brand when two types of aspergillus mold were discovered in products. As it turns out, those moldy items were packaged after August, 2023 and were discovered six months later. Makes you wonder how many others are still on the legal shelves of dispensaries. So buyers beware, check the dates on labels, or if you find something questionable, speak up. Now let's look at the implications of the false reporting of those percentages and why it keeps happening. As you may recall earlier this year, I reported that there were new potency testing standard requirements that went into effect in January. That might just explain the uptick in mandatory recalls of inaccurate labeling and test results. If you go on the DCC website, you will find a list of the products recalled. Most of the tainted products were for mold like aspergillus, but it also shows how many were taken off the shelves because of inaccurate or inflated test results. Both of these issues, which no one seems to be talking about, could be the result of old weed. So once again, before you buy, check the dates on the labels and hope the testing results are recent or at least at, after January 2024 when the new regs went into effect. The popular multiple award-winning musical comedy Reefer Madness returns for the first time in 25 years to where it all began, L.A., filling the walk of fame with laughter and great music, running May 30th through July 28th at the Whitley in Los Angeles. I'm Lavana Vassa from the Bay Sesh on 89.5 FM KZCT, reporting for PCM with this week's California Report for We Talk News. Meet Tara Rosenblum, an investigative reporter for News 12 New York. Tara is one of the most decorated broadcast journalists in the business. Her resume lists two Edward R. Murrow Awards and 53 Emmys. That's right, 53 Emmys. However, that's just a small percentage of the over 300 industry honors she has enjoyed in her 20 years at News 12. The Turn to Terra feature on that New York news channel has been one of the can't miss segments whenever an investigation must be told or a major news event needs coverage. And over the past two years, she has been documenting and shadowing three New York social equity cannabis license applicants, Jeremy Rivera, Jessica Nesant, and Yuri Krupitsky, each qualifying 
for the coveted license to operate in the cannabis business. Tara and her team followed each of them as they seek out their dreams from triumph and failure. From the New York legal system shutdown to the frustrations with the Office of Cannabis Management. The cannabis contest might be the crown jewel in an already incredible award-winning career. This week on Weed Talk News, we turn to Tara, who is talking with PCM founder Jimmy Young one-on-one. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Weed Talk News. You know, every week we try to feature a special person in our one-to-one section of our news. And this week we are honored to have a, well, I I consider her a peer because she's had a lot of the same experiences as I did in the 30 years that I was in TV newsrooms, except she's far more talented, far more successful. I mean, did I see 53 Emmy Awards? Yes, I I think we're in the 50s, but thank you for that overly generous introduction. That was very kind of you. No, I I, I try to be kind to people. 53, where do you keep all of that? I I have have one and I keep it, you know, on camera in the background. You know what I'm saying? Where do you keep 53 Emmys? You must have a separate room for them. It's the biggest source of tension in my marriage, I can assure you. (laughs) My, my, My husband has had it with them. And we have him in the basement in boxes right now, currently. Where is he? No, we have not my husband, but we have the Emmy Awards in boxes in the basement right now. Oh, I get you. I get you. Okay, that's fine. He, he's sick of them. He doesn't want them around. I get it. I, I totally get it. Um, but I have um, a ton of respect for someone with your resume and what you've done <laughs> in the trenches for many, many years as an investigative reporter. And I have just watched, I wanted to make sure it was fresh, the uh, three sections of a documentary that you were involved with. And I want to ask you right off the bat is the race for a cannabis license. Where in the world did you come up with that? And how did you find the three subjects you were working with? So as you're well aware, in March of 2021, uh, marijuana was legalized here in the Empire State in New York. And I've lived in this community for a long time. I've been at my current shop now this summer. Actually, next month will be two decades. So I live in the community. I'm a part of the community. And so I pretty much have my finger on the pulse of what people are thinking about and what's front of mind issues for them. And right after this happened, I felt like everywhere I went, people were asking questions about this historic piece of legislation and how is it going to work? How is it going to impact their neighborhood? So I needed, I knew I needed to do more. And this was at a time when the pandemic was raging. Uh, There was all kinds of protesting going on in New York City. And so it wasn't often in the A section or, you know, the top of the newscast. But I felt like it should have been because of the implications, right? So we wanted to just go beneath the surface and dig a little deeper. Next week, we will release the full interview with Jimmy and Tara. There is a hemp industry changing debate going on in the House of Representatives at the end of last week. PCM founder will have any breaking news for you. But now it's time for the Texas Report with Lisa Williams, where depending on the outcome of the debate on the farm bill could have major ramifications in the Lone Star State. I'm Lisa Williams, founder of the Toke Agency with the Texas Cannabis Report for We Talk News. Hold on to your hats, Texas. We got some smoking hot news from the hemp frontier. First up, let's talk about Hometown Hero. It's an Austin-based company known for selling all kinds of cool hemp and THC products. Well, they just launched the Texas Hemp Business Council, THBC. What is that, you ask? It's a nonprofit trade association dedicated to promoting and safeguarding hemp derived goodies in Texas. Here's why it's a big deal Texas sees a whopping $8 billion in annual sales from hemp products. That's huge. And it supports around 50,000 jobs, as well as contributes $22 billion to the supply chain. Yep, hemp is a big business around here. Well, 
there are some lawmakers sniffing around the idea of banning and or overregulating some hemp derived cannabinoids like Delta 8 or Delta 9 THC that could really mess things up for a lot of people. Let's break it down. Jobs and economy. Banning these products could put thousands of Texans out of work and hurt local economies. We're talking a big chunk of money disappearing from the state's economy and our pockets. Consumer choices. Many adults, including veterans, rely on these products for their health and their well-being. Losing access could mean turning to less effective or more dangerous alternatives on the black market. Legal confusion. Overregulation can create a confusing patchwork of rules that make it hard for businesses to operate and for consumers to know what's allowed and what's not. So to sum it up, the THBC is here to make sure Texas cannabis businesses have a strong voice, especially when lawmakers are in session. They're all about keeping your favorite hemp products legal and safe. That's the scoop, folks. Stay tuned next week for more updates and keep it cool, Texas. I'm Lisa Williams, founder of the Toke Agency with the Texas Cannabis Report for We Talk News. I'm Tina Tasaka with 420 Technologies, and this is the Nevada Report for We Talk News. Two weeks ago, I reported on a cultivation that has been filed against by the Cannabis Compliance Board State of Nevada against 1212 LLC for violations and potential fines totaling 80,000. Well, 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 here we go again. The CCB reported on May 14, 2024, another cultivation, 3AP Inc., has been found in violation of some of the many regulations that surround our industry. The audit took 82 days from May 31, 2023 to August 21, in which the CCB reports certain infractions were found. Number one, the waste disposal log on three different days did not reconcile with metric. Number two, the entity failed to file its camera failure reports, noting that a surveillance log was not working. And lastly, the company failed to properly post its sales tax permit in public view within the facility. The suggested fine for these violations, $22,500. Calling all meeting planners, Cannabition is a cannabis-themed meeting and event venue opening soon in Las Vegas, and it's part of the Planet 13 Entertainment Complex. This venue, Immersive Experience, which was designed by Emmy Award-winning creative director David Corrins, will feature 12,000 square feet of interactive exhibits and gathering spaces across two stories, as well as cannabis-themed entertainment, art, technology, and more. Even more cool, there's a hot box installation and a collaboration with music legend and cannabis entrepreneur Willie Nelson's brand, Willie's Reserve. Event planners looking for a dynamic, immersive venue can take advantage of Cannabition's flexible and versatile space that can accommodate full stages and production, banquet and cocktail tables, portable bars, and more. Half and full day buyouts ranging from 6 to 12 hours of exclusive access to Cannabition's mezzanine level. They have the full-blown packages, and they're right off the famous Las Vegas Strip. Well, that's it for the 702. I'm Tina Tasaka with 420 Technologies and Weed Talk News. And that will wrap up the A block of this week's Weed Talk News. In the next section or B block, we crank up our state by state reports, so don't go away. <laughs> We feel like, you know, that would be a worthy goal. That would be something that would really juice us up. Um, You know, it's great to make money in the industry, but it's also great to help people. And we're all about helping people figure out how to use the resources they have more resourcefully. That's really what this comes down to. And this technique we used back in 13 and 14 when the industry was first starting, 
I used it myself to raise $275,000 for my business. So I know it works. We're now dusting off the playbook for 2024.